Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we are starting the first session of day three. Um, we are going to talk in this session about program indicators and legends. It's going to be a very short explanation followed by a very practical exercise. So let me share my screen. You should be seeing my screen if you don't tell me the opposite. I'll get going. Uh, program indicators and legends. As in the rest of the academy, uh, we are assuming that you know program indicators and you know how to create program indicators. We are going to give you the two tricks to make them appear in the application and to display legends that we uh, understand that you also know. The first thing to explain is that uh, program indicators in the um, in the app live in the domain of the tracked entity instance. So cohort indicators, for example, will not uh, probably make sense or group uh, tracked entity instance group indicators will not make sense. They are calculated and displayed inside the um, what I'm what I'm going to show you now. Analytics we'll see tomorrow. But in this case, for the tracked entity instance dashboard. Um, so to add indicators, I mean indicators will display here. Again, we have our navigation bar. We will, this is inside the tracked entity instance. I'll make a demo. We have an analytics tab. So here is where our indicators are displayed. But for a program indicator to appear here, we need to mark it. In the where we come when we configure it in the HIS2, we need to mark the stick display in form. So, what is and is not available? Um, we are not supporting all, uh, I think, uh, maybe now I'm corrected by my team, uh, but uh, there are aggregation types that do not apply. As we are living in the domain of the tracked entity instance and document. So only the last value one will apply. If you select last value, the indicator will take the last value. Um, all data elements and constants are supported, variables are supported according to the image. And then all the two functions, except relationship count, I think this is still the case. And analytic period boundaries, as I said, are not supported because we are working in one uh, in one track entity instance, not groups of track entity instances. We can take questions later if, if this is not clear. Um, so now legends. It's it's useful to link legends to indicators because the app will display the color of the legend. So we will make a demo later, but there is nothing new here. This is just coming directly from the DHIS2 configuration. I will make an explanation later when I create the, um, when I show you the legend we are going to use because the boundaries in the way legends are configured in DHIS2 can be a bit tricky sometimes, but I will explain more in the demo. So yeah, let's put an indicator on, on our app and, and make a, a demo. I'm going to make the demo based on the exercise that we will do later. So um, it means that I'm already telling you uh, what should we do as an exercise uh, while I do this demo. So let me get this out of the screen. Um, demo. Let's prepare the exercise. Sorry about this. Every time I change the cable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Eyes not coming. Okay. I don't know why today the bugging mode was disabled. USB the bugging mode was disabled. Anyway, so this is our app. This is your student program as my student program. So if we open one Tract Entity instance now, and we go to analytics, we have, okay, we have this indicator which, because it was there before, but we don't have any other indicator. So let's go and check uh, the server. We are gonna look at two things. First, um, the indicator. So you have to create a program indicator like the one I am showing you uh, here. We give you the form, the, the expression, and everything. So it should be straightforward. So you need to create an indicator for your student program with the name risk patient or however, but remember to put the code of your student program. We said enrollment, you could say event, it will work equally, but don't touch the boundaries. But what is important is that we mark display in form. Is by this tick, is this tick the one that the app is going to check to display the indicator inside your track entity instance. The indicator needs to belong to your program and have the display in form tick mark. So I'm, I'm enabling it now, and then I have to choose a legend. I'm going to choose the risk patient legend, and we are gonna look at it now together. You don't need to create a legend. The legend is created for you. You need to create an indicator and assign the legend. We will all use the same legend for the exercise. Um, so let's look at the indicator. The expression, it's a nested D2 condition, which is saying that if the patient age is equal or greater than 65, then return number two. If not, another condition. If the age is greater or equal to 45, meaning the patient is between 65 and 45, return number one. And if this was not true, and this was not true means the patient is under 45, then we return a zero. It's very important to understand this because we are going to create the legend according to these values that the indicator is going to return. So we know our indicator is gonna give, you, give us a number two if the patient is over 65, which is considered risk, the, the indicator is going to return a number one. If the patient is between 65 and 45, which is mid, medium risk, and if it's under 45, it's gonna return a zero. This is just an example. Please don't tell me this has no medical or health foundations. This is just an example created by me. I'm not a health, I don't have a health background and I didn't check any evidence, <laughs> scientific evidence to do this. It's just an example. So now let's have a look at our legend. I'm gonna save it because, uh, well, uh, and in the filter, we just apply it always to all the tract entity instances. So I'm putting through. So I'm gonna save it because I changed the stick and I assigned the legend. So I need to save it. And now let's have a look together at the legend. Again, you don't need to create a legend. You can use the legend that is already created, risk patient. Marta, sorry. Yes. There's a question in the chat. If you could uh, go again through the condition of the indicator. Yes, I can. But we are going to give you the condition in the exercise. So it, it, it should be okay. But I can go back to the condition. You can also make sure that your indicator, mine is public. You can all have a look. I'm gonna say it you only. I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna do it. It's, I'm gonna say 
that I can be an edit and that all of you can view only so that you don't change it. You can do the same with your indicator. So the expression, it's easier to read it here, is that it's a D2 condition. The D2 conditions, as you can see here, are a Boolean expression, which will return true or false. If it returns true, the next value is the result of the indicator. And if it's false, is the last one. So what we are doing is Boolean condition, it's easier here, is H, the H, the attribute H that I took from here. Is the age of this patient bigger, greater or equal to 65? Yes, then it's true. Then I return number two, the value that is here. False, then if it's false, I have nested another condition inside there. Instead of returning a value directly, I have another condition, which is asking again, okay, is then the, the age of the patient greater or equal to 45? So it's not bigger or it's not over 65, but is it over 45? Meaning, is it in the middle? Yes, then I return a number one. No, then I already know the patient is below 45 because it's not over 65 and it's not over 45, then it has to be below, under 45. Then I return a zero because it's no risk. So I'm gonna show you now the legend which is going to interpret this and assign colors. I have put three periods to this legend, three intervals. So the zero one, now this is the tricky thing. In the HIS2, we, we need to, we cannot have gaps. If I put here 0 0.8, it, it's not gonna let me save. We have to have the same, value in the end of one interval and the beginning of the next one. This is not the purpose of procession, so, and you don't have to do it, but it's important to understand it. So here I have to put an interval in which I know the value that my indicator is going to return, which is either zero, one, or two, is found in the middle. Don't use the extremes because they are shared and then the HS doesn't know what to do. So in this case, I know my indicator will return a zero, and if it returns a zero, it will fall between minus zero one and zero nine. Zero is here. If it returns a one, then it's between zero point nine and one point nine. So for sure it is here. And if the indicator returns a two, it's between one point nine and two point one. So this is a legend you don't have to create, but you you have to use in your indicator. So I'm going to go back to the app now, because remember that I have enabled, oh, sorry. this tick here, and I have assigned the risk patient, right? So, because of that, if I now go to the app, um, sync configuration. We do have notifications now. So let's give it some time. Are there any other questions, Jaime? Uh, sorry, yeah, the, uh, someone is, I was replying on Slack to a hit. Uh, why we need to put two in the, in the filter? What? Um, why? Because I think you need to put something. Yeah, exactly. I think it's mandatory. Um, but we want to, because you might say this indicator only apply for men. Then you could filter, okay, if sex is equal to men. But we are not filtering because we want to apply to all our track entity instances. Then we put through and it will run always. And then the PKS as well. Nine will not be counted in the first, right? In the first case, right? Nine? I think it's in the legends, right, Deepika? 
Yeah. So, but the thing is, our indicator will never return a number nine. I, I made a legend to work with my indicator. So it's, you, you need to think of the both sides. My indicator only returns zero, one, or two. So the, the legend is only for that. But this legend will not work well with indicators that return other numbers bigger than two, if, if that answers the question. I cannot open the chat. Okay. Nine will not be counted. Zero to eight, define zero and nine. Gitik, I'm not sure I understand the question if you want to explain it better, if my answer was not addressing your concern. I'm going to, to finish the demo. We have three patients here. So let's go with the under 36. We should Tipica, see you. you should be able to talk now, maybe. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Actually, I have a question regarding the legend part because you defined zero as the starting value and nine as the ending value, right? And that was supposed not nine, to be counted. Not nine. Not nine. In so, your legend, if you can yes, um, open the, le the legend ones. It's not nine, it's 0 0.9. Okay. Uh, Let me open yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, for this, yeah, for example, this, uh, for the first, you have defined the start value as 0 0.1 and the end value as 0 0.9, right? Minus but, 0 0.1. Yeah, okay, minus fine, 0. minus 0 0.1. But uh, for the end value, you have defined 0 0.9. The legend never takes this value, right? It will only take 0 0.8 for this part. Which value will never take? 0 0.9 will not be counted under will the Will not be one, counted. Right? Actually, yeah. 0 0.9, I don't think will be counted in any. That will not be, uh, be counted for the second condition. And I'm not sure where it's included. Okay, so there will be a gap in the legend then. I think so. Yeah, I don't. So I don't really is, like. We can we can play later with this. Yeah, while you do the this, this never works. Uh, this never works completely fine. Whenever I'm yeah, creating yeah, legend know, for the application. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. Thank you. Thank you so much. I I agree. The legends are not very strong here in BHA. So let's go. Here is our, our indicator. So this patient who is 36, don't pay attention to the age indicator because I don't really know where is this coming from. I couldn't find it, Jaime. But it, this patient is not, this patient is not 74 years, it's 36. But I don't know where is this. It's not a program indicator. <laughs> it's probably a program rule somewhere. But anyway, this is our indicator. This patient is 36, which, is, which means he's under 45. So the legend is green. This patient is 46. So the legend is yellow. The indicator returned a one. Oh. And then, ah, oh, no, 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 no. And then this one is 85. So he is a risk patient based on age, based on my role. Um, the indicator returned the number two. Um, the demo is uh, finished with this, completed with this. And uh, the, in, the, the exercise is basically that you have to create the risk indicator, which is exactly the same than my indicator, but for your program. So you do have here, the, the steps, analytics type enrollment with the full boundaries, select display in form, assign risk patient legend. This is the expression and this is the filter. But you can also go and look at my indicator and create yours. And then uh, sync your metadata and check that it works with your tracked entity instances in your program. What we would like you to submit is two screenshots um, of the of one tracked entity instance analytics tab that show the indicator rendering two different colors of the legend, wherever you, you choose. Um, so are there any questions? Otherwise we can start with the exercise. I'm gonna leave this here. You do have the legend. I'm gonna 
probably paste the legend in the chat. But you will need to change here. This is this is an attribute for your program. So you will need to you will need to select it in the in the program indicator wizard for creating. You cannot paste directly. This red part needs to be replaced by your by your attribute. Yeah, Marta. Yes. I think the participants cannot uh, see the legend. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I probably used this wrong. Jaime, how can I give them access, all of them? Uh, let me check. Uh, I, I, I thought I, I gave to COVID admin, but that's us, that's not them. No, the admin, I think they should be like this. Let me check. So you can view. Let me access with my testing account. <clears throat> no, I cannot see it either. Um, what about now? Can you try again? Yeah, let me check. And then I don't. Tipo, the risk patient indicator, you have to create it, but you should be able to see mine. So in principle, anyone can view. I can see the risk patient markup, but I cannot edit. it. The legend? Yeah. You don't need to edit the legend. Yeah, but I can see that. Okay. So what about the risk patient? Can you see it? The risk patient, I can see it, yes. The but, indicator, then? Uh, right, yeah, yeah, one second. I'm following your screen. Uh, Yes, I can see it as well. I don't have you, to... should, you should all uh, be able to see the... Yeah, uh, so, um, uh, Pacific, can you confirm because you were asking on, on, on the chat on the Slack? Maybe if you cannot, could you maybe log out and log in so the permissions are reapplied? I can see any legend. Uh, Deepika as well? Yes, we can see it, okay. Okay, good.
Marta Ibrahim is asking, it should be event or enrollment type analysis? It's in the screen right now. Enrollment, default boundaries. But it's going to, I think, I mean, I think, no, it will be the same if they put event. But enrollment. 